And we're now streaming live for our Cosmology segment. If you want to see when we stream live to Twitch, check out the mobile app. It's quite good. Twitch.tv slash Smashamash is the URL. And it's a fantastic mobile streaming platform and live streaming platform in general. On your PC, whatever you want to use. Thanks to our BitChute subscribers. Got some new subscribers over there on BitChute. More exclusive content coming there soon. And also thanks to our YouTube subscribers. Don't forget to press share. Share the content in your social media as I think the algorithms are not a fan of us. But in any case, press like, press subscribe, leave us a comment. Tell your friends and foes about the channel. And don't forget to check our playlists. There are all kinds of videos you may not have seen if you only watch a Daily Space Weather. For example, lots of driving, riding, and pro tips videos have been coming out. Perhaps check out that playlist. If you want to see the Lehigh Valley from the perspective of a cyclist, there are a bunch of brand new videos there featuring things like the Allentown Fairgrounds and so on. So check out our playlists. Today's cosmology segment is quite interesting. There are several stories on it. So let's get to it. As here at the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, we're quite interested in cosmology an aspect of science in the process of being rewritten. First, let's talk about fast blue optical transients. Now this artist's rendition here, this is not a photo, folks. This is an artist's rendition. And what's what you're seeing here is one of the explanations for how these fast blue optical transients occur. For example, a rotating star is going to emit light, perhaps, through an irregular disk of gas and dust. And when it does so, sometimes perhaps it finds an empty space where it's able to produce a fast transient burst of optical blue light. Ultimately, it's not really understood how it works, but one of the explanations is a patchy environment. So this phys.org article in the Astronomy and Space section is about these fast blue optical transients and we talk about many different kinds of transients on the channel, whether it's gamma ray bursters, fast radio bursts, coming from outside or inside the Milky Way. Also, X-ray transients are something we regularly talk about. Anyway, the origin of fast blue optical transients is still under debate. Here's a quote. And by the way, we're talking about an object called AT2018 Cow. AT2018 Cow is the object that we're talking about here. And that is an image of it there. Again, fast blue optical transients as detected from AT2018 Cow. Cheers. And check out the astronomy photo of the day. The astronomy picture of the day, apod.nasa.com, apod.nasa.com. It's actually three different images, folks. One consists of the over-contrasted image from up here, showing the chromospheric glare. And the transition to the corona. Some great prominence is also showing up there over the, the edge. And then all of the detail down here, the chromosphere, looks like a kickball. And the most important thing is this International Space Station image as it transited the sun. They even caught imagery of the Crew Dragon there. You can see it's in its docking position. The astronomy picture of the day, you can look at it yourself at apod.nasa.gov. And shout out to Mehmet Ergun for taking this photo. Well done, Mehmet Ergin. Anyway, it's not a sunspot or anything like that. <laughs> it's the International Space Station transiting the closest star. Now, I'd like to know what you, our viewer, think of LIGO. What do you think of LIGO, the Laser Interferometry Gravitational Observatory? I've got some opinions on LIGO, and... I'm not going to express them in today's cosmology segment. However, there are issues with the detection of, quote, gravitational waves, end quote. 
And what this article is about is about the fact that co-rotating neutron stars ought to be emitting a constant hum of gravitational waves. And if we're detecting gravitational waves, how come we can't pick up that hum? Well, let's read a quote. We took an educated guess at a specific location where continuous gravitational waves might be based in part on what we already know about pulsars. They're like neutron stars, but send out radio waves instead of continuous gravitational waves. We hypothesized that there would be continuous gravitational waves detected near pulsar radio waves, just like guessing that your missing keys will probably be close to your handbag or wallet. Using observational data, the team spent a lot of time, 6,000 hours, listening carefully for that faint hum, and guess what? They didn't find it. Our search was significantly more sensitive than any previous search for this location, says Vete. Unfortunately, we didn't hear anything, so our guess was wrong. This time, it's back to the drawing board for now, but we'll keep listening. For gravitational waves, and yeah, 6,000 hours essentially wasted looking for gravitational waves and not finding any. Today's random number between 1 and 1031 will coincide with an object at the Neil Gorel Swift Bat X-ray Observatory, the Burst Alert Telescope, a monitor of transient X-rays. Today's number is 999, which will bring us way toward the end of the list here. And number 999 is ALAC, which is an RS catastrophic variable, N variable. I don't, I have no idea what that means. We'll have to do further research on this one. AR LAC. Here are the X ray transients from it. And we saw some pretty dense bursts here over the past week and a half. A series of dense bursts there. And let's take a look at it on Sinbad. This catastrophic variable, certainly a star. And there it is on Sinbad. Let's go to Aladdin Light and look at it in some more wavelengths. While we're here, how about on the two mass? There it is in infrared light. How about the pan stars? There it is on pan stars. Some pretty high resolution stuff there. How about in blue light, often showing us additional features? And here it is on the XMM Newton. Nothing showing up there. And there it is on Chandra. There's actually a very detailed image of it there on the Chandra X-ray telescope, and you can see this oblong nature to it. Probably an indication of its polar configuration. I won't get deeper into that in today's video. The object is AR LAC, the catastrophic variable n-type, a specific type of catastrophic variable, and I have no idea what RS stands for. If you've figured that out already, leave us a comment and let us know. Let's talk about radio emissions from Venus's ionosphere. Now, Venus doesn't have a magnetosphere in the context that the Earth does. But guess what the Parker Solar Probe has done? It has detected radio signals in Venus's ionosphere. Now, it's probably not that surprising to many of viewers of the Smash News Network, Least Busted Name and News, but it's still an interesting story. Here's a, an animation of it. And you're looking at the radio signal there on the right and the path of the Parker Solar Probe as it does another gravity assist in Venus's ionosphere. Parker Solar Probe uses Venus to slow it down to achieve faster and faster speeds and closer and closer passes to the closest star. And one of those passes led it through Venus's ionosphere where some oddities in radio signals were noted. Radio signal in Venus's atmosphere, yes. So this article's on SciTech Daily. You'll find it all over the Science Wire. Another interesting story about Venus, my favorite planet. It's been my favorite planet since, uh, I don't know, the mid-90s, probably. So another bit of sort of unexpected data there coming from the Parker Solar Probe as Venus enthusiasts use the Parker data to gain a little bit more of an understanding of the behavior of Venus's ionosphere.
It took a mission to Venus, and decades later, a state-of-the-art mission to the Sun. The goal of flying by Venus is to slow down the spacecraft so that the Parker Solar Probe can dive closer to the Sun, said Noor E. Rauafi, Parker Solar Probe project scientist at the Applied Physics Laboratory. But we would not miss the opportunity to gather science data and provide insights into a mysterious planet such as Venus. Collinson likened the research to hitchhiking. Venus scientists were eager to piggyback off Parker Solar Probe's flyby for new data and views of Earth's twin planet. To see Venus now, it's all about these little glimpses, he said. Great article there. Again, you can find it on SciTech Daily and all over the Science Wire. Lastly, I would invite our viewers to head to smashamash.com. One of the links you can find there is to the Smash O Forum. And there's a cosmology forum there. Perhaps check that out. Approaching 50,000 views at smashamash.com slash forum. Another link you may find there is the Smash O Merch link. And if you click on that, you'll find our red bubble page. And there's a brand new design. By the way, my vaccination status is none of your business. And I like this one in orange. It's very bright. It makes you look like a prison inmate. And what a perfect analogy, a prison inmate. Informing you that your vaccination status is nobody's business but your own. Cheers. <laughs> and that's today's cosmology segment. We'll have to say goodbye to Twitch. Bye, Twitch as we continue on with our daily space weather content.